The Chernobyl nuclear disaster is widely regarded as being one of the worst nuclear catastrophes in human history. The incident took place on April 26, 1986 in the early hours of the morning. Two incredibly large explosions took place in Reactor Block 4, resulting in massive quantities of nuclear waste being launched into the air surrounding the plant. This meant all of the nearby cities needed to be evacuated in order to keep the residents as safe as possible. However, they would soon learn that, for the most part, the damage had already been done. In the lead-up to the disasters, employees had been running through a series of protocols to simulate a power failure, trying to prove whether or not their systems were capable of handling such an outage. However, in the midst of the test procedure, things went terribly wrong, and the reactor detonated. Hundreds of thousands of residents were forcibly removed from their homes. Many of them weren't even granted enough time to gather their belongings. To make matters even worse, most of the residents of the nearby towns were left with devastating health effects that would last for years or even decades. In fact, still today, more than 35 years after the disaster, some people are still suffering health side effects after being exposed to large amounts of radioactive waste. Even with all of this in mind, there's still a lot about Chernobyl that most people don't know. In fact, some of the topics we'll be covering today have never been mentioned by television series or documentaries, so get ready to learn more about Chernobyl than you ever thought possible. But before we jump into it, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stay tuned for number one to learn one of the most interesting bits of information about Chernobyl that most people don't know about. Vasily Ignatenko after the reactor of Chernobyl exploded and sent disastrous amounts of radioactive waste into the air, a fire also broke out. The fumes from this fire only made matters worse and continued to release large quantities of radioactive material into the air. This alone may seem terrible, however, things only grew more disastrous from here. After a short while, rain clouds began to roll in. Much of the radioactive waste was absorbed by these clouds and would eventually rain down on the surrounding areas after a short while. When experts were asked to explain how much radioactive material had been spread around the nearby cities, they estimated that it would have been the equivalent of around 200 times the amount of radioactive material that was detonated on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. To help keep the damage to the surrounding areas to a minimum, the Russian government began employing men who would soon become known as liquidators. These men were tasked with getting as close to the source of the explosion as possible to help put out the roaring flames and bring an end to the catastrophe. Before long, more than 600,000 men were brought in to help clean up the surrounding areas. Of these 600,000 workers, there were teams of firemen, nuclear specialists, construction workers, transport agents, and even civil protective workers. Together, they helped to lessen the impact of the disaster. However, for the most part, the damage had already been done. To make matters worse, scientists at the time didn't fully grasp how terrible this incident truly was. Because of this, the majority of the men who showed up to work around the site of the explosion were not equipped with proper protective gear. This meant that they were exposed to toxic levels of radiation for many hours each day. Some health professionals are concerned that after the men returned from work, they would then transfer this radioactivity onto their wives, children, and others who lived nearby. The truth is, we may never understand the true impact of what took place that day, nor what would take place in the weeks, months, and years after the incident. One of the men who ended up being affected the most was known as Vasily Ignatyanka. This young man was only 
25 years old at the time, but he took it upon himself to become a national hero when he volunteered to try to put out the blaze the best he could. He exposed himself to massive amounts of radiation by coming so close to the fire and would ultimately be hospitalized as a result. However, by the time he made it to the hospital, it was far too late. His body had become so irradiated that he began to swell in ways that seemed inhuman. By the end of it all, his caretakers weren't even able to put clothes or shoes on him because his body had become so mutilated by the radiation. Some reports even say that he began to cough so violently that he even coughed up some of his internal organs. After suffering in ways that most of us cannot even comprehend, he lost his life on May 13, 1986, when he was buried. Those who tended to his gravesite had to install an extra layer of concrete as well as a layer of zinc to help keep the radiation of his body from eventually finding its way to the surface. Russia kept it a secret. After the reactor had exploded, the Russian government was notified about how terrible the incident truly was. However, rather than take immediate action to get the nearby citizens to safety, the government decided to keep the story under wraps and do everything they could to keep it a secret. It would take several days for the surrounding areas to be evacuated after government officials finally admitted the true scope of the disaster. Prior to this, they did everything they could to sweep the incident under the rug. Though, in the end, they were forced to admit defeat and own up to their mistakes. If you thought a few days was far too long for anyone to find out about the disaster, wait until you hear this. Other countries were not informed about what had taken place at all. You have to keep in mind that at the time, Russia and the United States were in the midst of the Cold War. Because of this, communication between the two countries was very limited. However, the United States aside, Russia didn't inform any other countries of what had taken place either. It would be quite a while later before several Swedish nuclear power workers noticed that a large amount of nuclear waste had been released into the environment. After learning about this, they alerted everyone to what was going on and before long found out what had taken place in Chernobyl. If it weren't for these researchers, we likely would have never known that the event ever happened. Radioactive Iodine, Cesium, and Strontium When you think about the negative health effects of a nuclear disaster like this, you probably think about the large amounts of radioactive waste that was leaked into the air of the nearby communities. However, have you ever thought about what else could have happened in the aftermath? One of the most dangerous and concerning aspects of the nuclear disaster was radioactive iodine. Iodine isn't a chemical that we hear too much about in the news or in health classes. However, it is vital to our survival. Our thyroid glands hold a large amount of our body's iodine, and it's often ingested through plants that were raised in high-quality soil with adequate levels of iodine in the dirt. However, after the Chernobyl explosion, much of the iodine in the area, both from the soil and otherwise, had become irradiated. The problem with this is that our bodies will bring in iodine from almost any source possible. Since most of the iodine in our bodies is stored in thyroid glands, this meant that radioactive iodine posed a significant risk for people in the surrounding areas, as it could very easily and very quickly lead to thyroid cancer. However, there's an interesting way to get around this. Our bodies are only able to store a certain amount of iodine at any given time. If your body is already theoretically full of iodine, it will reject any further iodine and it will simply be eliminated. Iodine also only has a half-life of around 8 days. Because of this, so long as the locals ensured that their bodies were maxed out with as much iodine as they needed, they were at relatively low risk of getting irradiated iodine into their thyroid glands. To help make sure this was possible, most locals were given iodine supplements to take before the radioactive iodine made its way into their bodies. Thankfully, this seems to have lessened the impact of thyroid cancer for most people in the area. However, it did not completely eliminate it. 
In the end, many people were still left with devastating health effects. If this wasn't bad enough, chemicals like cesium and strontium were affected by radiation as well. Strontium mainly helps keep your bones and teeth healthy, while cesium can affect the structure of certain body tissues and blood. These chemicals were also irradiated, but there was very little that medical experts could do to negate the negative effects of these chemicals. To make matters worse, these irradiated chemicals have a half-life of more than 30 years, meaning only around 50% of the toxic chemicals have been eliminated in Chernobyl, meaning the area will still be uninhabitable for many years to come. Ivan Shamyanok However, even though Chernobyl is completely uninhabitable, it may shock you to learn that for many years some people still lived there. We don't really know why. However, at least 700 people are known to have moved back to Chernobyl immediately after the nuclear fallout took place. The town had once been home to around 14,000 people. However, only 700 remained after the disaster. The rest of the occupants did their best to move their lives elsewhere and start over. Though one elderly man and woman stand out among the rest of the residents, a 95-year-old man named Ivan Shamyanok lived in Chernobyl ever since the disaster took place. His wife would eventually pass away. However, she did not pass away from the negative effects due to the disaster. Instead, it seems as though she simply passed away from old age. The couple refused to leave the area and would live out the remainder of their lives in Chernobyl. Regardless of the aforementioned health risks, what's somewhat creepy about this is that neither of the two ever complained of any negative side effects. They both stayed quite healthy for the remainder of their lives. Now that Ivan's wife has passed away, he lives the average life of a somewhat lonely old man. Considering there's virtually no one else living in Chernobyl today, to call this man lonely would be a dramatic understatement. Day Trips to Chernobyl We are now left with the aftermath of Chernobyl more than 30 years after the incident took place. According to local laws, Chernobyl is officially off-limits to anyone who wished to live there permanently. However, for those who lived there before the nuclear fallout, the government has been much more relaxed about these rules, as is evidenced by Ivan and his former wife. However, even though no one's allowed to live in the area permanently, that hasn't stopped many explorers from visiting Chernobyl over the years. In fact, in 2011, just 25 years after the explosion, tourists began to flock to the area to catch a glimpse of what has essentially become a deserted wasteland. Tourists are allowed to make single-day trips into Chernobyl to take a look at the forgotten city. However, before they're allowed to enter, they're tasked with taking part in a decontamination procedure. They're also forced to wear protective clothing if they plan on getting close to the reactor. On top of this, they're also asked to decontaminate themselves once again after they leave the area to ensure that they don't take any radiation home with them. Since the tragedy took place, Chernobyl has remained largely untouched by human hands. Though in more recent years, the Ukrainian government hopes to bring in large amounts of money by hosting private tours to the area. In total, they estimated that around 100,000 people will begin to visit Chernobyl each year to get a better look at what happened on that fateful day all those years ago. What's quite scary about these tours is that Guests are actually allowed to enter the control room in which everything went wrong, leading to the disaster more than three decades ago. In the past, this reactor was shielded by thick material to keep guests far away from any radioactive waste. However, for the last two years, guests have been allowed to enter the control room with only minimal protective equipment, including full-body protective gear. It seems that the Ukrainian government is doing the best it can to make something good out of a devastating situation by allowing people to venture into the area and take home memories that will last a lifetime. Let us know in the comments, would you be interested in visiting Chernobyl? Why or why not?
That's the video for today. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Thanks for watching.